guys, it's Beth, and today I am doing a little tutorial and project share of little signs that I use paper wood and paint on. And these projects are part of my Pine Street Square paper pad, kilopad project. And in one of my last videos, I talked about how I wanted to make a sign using this Let It Snow pattern paper. And I wanted to make it reversible and do like this holly pattern on the other side, but I needed to do like a image or word or something just because the holly by itself was pretty plain. So I knew I wanted to try paint on here, but before I did the painting on there, I decided to do a test project and make this little sign just to see how well the paint took to the paper. And it turned out really well. So I finished off my, big sign, but then I decided I wanted to make some more of these little signs because I thought they would be really cute for tree ornaments or wreath signs. You know, a lot of people hang the signs on the wreaths anymore, or it could be used as little signs that could go on a pantry door, like it's a pantry or names of a kid's, you know, a kid's name and it could go on their bedroom door, whatever, lots of uses for these little signs. But I wanted to make some more, so I thought I'd take you guys along on that process. So to start, you will need a surface to make your sign out of. I've used quarter inch, I think it's quarter inch plywood that we happen to have on hand from left from another project. You could use thicker plywood. You could use heavy duty chipboard or metal, like thin metal sheets. You could use like a ceramic plaque of some sort. And you could use like the little wooden plaques that Michaels and Hobby Lobby both have or if you can't find that or not the size that you want, you could always have, if you don't have the ability to cut it down yourself, you could always have a home improvement store cut down a piece of metal, like a metal sheet or some plywood for you. And then it's up to you if you want to paint it or stain it. I think you could, e you could even put a light coat of paint on the heavy duty chipboard just to hide the cardboard. Mine was stained already in ebony, which was perfect. So worked for my, my quick test project. But you, once you have the surface that you're going to make your sign out of, you will need some patterned paper. You will need some paint, a stencil, unless you can freehand your design. You will need a stencil of some sort. You'll need a paintbrush. You will need some Mod Podge. And yes, like we do get the giant gallon because we use a lot of it. You will need something to punch your hole with. I'm going to be using my crocodile to punch my holes for my twine. You will need some type of twine or wire to make your sign hanger out of. And I think that's it. So we will go ahead and get started. So I am going to start with my Mod Podge since my surface is already ready. And we have these, this little tray that we pour our Mod Podge in since we have the big gallon jugs. But I just put, I start with my hard surface and put my Mod Podge on there first. You want to give it a good coat. And then I also put a coat on my paper. Normally I have wax paper down to work on. But. Then you want to line your paper up. Hopefully you have a little bit of slide room here. I cut my paper down to an eighth of an inch shorter on all sides than what my wood surface is. So I think my plywood is like five and three quarters by two and a half. So then I just cut my paper down to an eighth of an inch shy of that, just so I would have a wood border all the way around. And then you can use your fingers for this, or you can use an old credit card, or if you have a squeegee of any kind, I prefer to use a squeegee rather than just my fingers, just to make sure I get all of the extra Mod Podge out from underneath my paper. And I'm probably a little OCD about it. I go over it several times from many different directions just to make sure that I get it good. Okay. 
feels good. So now you want to let this dry before you do your painting. And I have one that I have that has already dried and it's got the paper on it already. So if you have a stencil, you want to pull that out and it can be any kind of stencil. It can be one that you've like cut yourself, one that you've bought pre-made or one like I made mine on my silhouette. And then you can see all the different joys that are on here. But this is just Dollar Tree contact paper that I used because I knew I wanted something sticky, but not super sticky because I didn't want it to peel my paper off when I was peeling it up after I was done painting. So I just went into my silhouette and cut and typed in the word joy, turned it into a, like made it a cursive font and then cut it, sent it to my silhouette. I also created a cut box around it so that I didn't have to do that after the fact. My cut box is just a little bit bigger than my surface to paint here. So you want to take your stencil and if you've cut it with your silhouette and it's a really detailed stencil, you can totally use transfer paper here. I'm Mine's pretty easy. So I'm just going to use, do it by hand and you want to line it up as center it as best you can, which is sometimes easier said than done. This is why transfer tape would come in really handy because it keeps it together together better. But let's get it a little bit further over. Again, probably easier said than done. That where I want it. Okay. And since mine was, like I said, a fairly simple design, all I have to worry about is adding the centers to my letters, which I can do pretty easily. And you want to make sure that you get, you don't have to have the entire thing smoothed down on your sign, but you need to make sure there are no bubbles around where you are going to paint. So you want to make sure that that is smoothed down really well. Otherwise your paint could bleed a lot underneath your contact paper. Okay. Get my Mod Podge out of the way next once your stencil is down. And if you are really good at freehanding, you could totally freehand this, you know, to say or have whatever image you want on there. I am not good at freehanding at all. And you could even take a pencil and probably draw it out and then come back in and paint it. But like I said, I'm I am not a very good freehander with paint sometimes. So the paint I'm using is just this folk art home decor chalk paint in sheepskin so it's an off-white. I'm just going to add a little bit to my little scrap here. You don't need a whole lot and then I'm just using a little foam brush. I'm going to dab some paint on the brush and then dab a little bit off and then I'm going to use the dabbing method on my across my silhouette or across my stencil here. And you want to just do a really light coat. And for my purposes, I want mine to have a rustic look. So it doesn't have to have perfect coverage. I still want it to be covered enough that people, you know, you can tell that it says joy. But it doesn't have to be a perfect coverage. I don't mind having some of the paper come through because I want to look, I want it to have like that aged rustic look like some of the paint is already peeling off. So you'll just keep going until you get your stencil done. And once you get your first coat on, you need to let it dry for a little bit. And if you're doing a thin coat, it doesn't take long to dry at all. Okay. 
So that is my first coat. So like I said, I would set that aside and let that dry for a bit. I actually have one that already has a second coat on it and is dry. So I will trade that out. And so now you want to peel your stencil off. And even though I'm using contact paper and I know it's not super duper sticky, like I still want to take my time. Let's see how easy it comes off. And you can already tell like there's a little bit of bleeding, but it's not bad at all. And like I said, I don't mind that because it looks handmade and rustic. I am going to use a my weeding pick so that I can get the centers of my letters out here. And so at this point, if you wanted to, if you want to make it look a little more rustic, you can come in with some sandpaper. I did that on my big sign here. I don't know if you can see that through the camera, but there were a couple spots where I sanded it down so you could see a little bit more of the paper coming through. Because if you look at this side, you can see how worn the paint looks. So I knew I wasn't going to be able to match that, but I wanted to, to at least have a similar effect. So you can do that at this point. You can sand it down or you can leave it. So next, what I want to do is come back in with my Mod Podge. And I'm gonna do two coats of Mod Podge to seal it up. I don't do my seal coat before I paint just because I don't want the, I want the paint to sink into the paper and the wood and not sit on top of the Mod Podge. So I need to come back in now and seal my paper down with my Mod Podge. And again, I usually do two coats. So you, once you do your one coat, you want to give it some good dry time so it can cure a little bit and dry good. So I will set that aside. And what I would do next after my two coats of Mod Podge have dried, I would come in with my polyacrylic. This is not a required step. It's just something that we do. I've noticed that if you Mod Podge something and then if it's exposed to heat and humidity, it can get tacky and stick to things. So like if you were to take your sign after you've made it and after the holidays, holidays and you just throw it into the bin with your other decorations, if it got hot and humid wherever you were storing them, it could stick to something else and then peel the paper off. So this is just an extra protective step that we take because this prevents tackiness from the surface and it also gives it an extra coat of protection so that like you can actually dent Mod Podge. So even if your wood doesn't get dent, if it, if it falls, the wood may not dent, but the Mod Podge can get a dent or ding in it. So this just helps seal it up. But we use the Minwax water-based polyacrylic clear mat. You can find, we got ours at Lowe's. You can find it just about anywhere. And you can get, I believe you can get smaller cans as well. So once you get your two coats, I put two coats of polyacrylic on. And once that has dried, you need to punch your holes for your hanger, whatever type of hanger you are using. And like I said, I used a We Are Memory Keepers Cropodile. This thing cuts through just about anything. I've used it on plywood. I've used it on metal, on leather. Like I have needed to add notches to belts before and this cuts through like butter. My husband apparently found something that you can't punch through very well <laughs> and he broke, he bent the little prongs on my larger hole here but my little hole still like this is the one I use for belt loops it works perfect but I did end up buying a new one for the larger hole so that I can use it for projects like this but so I've already cut one hole and it's up to you where you want to put your hole how far down and how far in I'm just kind of eyeballing it here 
and then I will punch through and just like that see how easy that punched and then you're just left with your little trash piece and then you want to cut your metal your twine your ribbon yarn whatever it is that you are using as your hanger I already have my twine cut and I am going to loop mine through and I'm going to tie a knot in the back probably trim that off or fix that so that you can't see the knot but there's my sign like I said these would be great for holiday wreaths you could make them for any holiday season if you wanted to you could even make this reversible and so like if you have a wreath like that for the fall you could have like fall and Thanksgiving or something like that and like I said if you wanted to put a make it like a nun like if you don't want to use a hanger event of on a door or wall or something you could always leave leave out the holes don't punch the holes and then put it on the door with some command strips like that'd be really cute like if you had a kid's name and you had some fun kid themed paper and you could put that on their door i think i had one of those as a kid when i was growing up so anyway i hope this gives you guys an idea of how to use up your paper for something in your home like I said, you could put a family name on here and make a great gift for an ornament as well. And also, random thought, even if you, you could probably do this with stickers or vinyl as well. So it doesn't have to be painted. But that was my fun project using this paper from Pine Street Square. I do have another video in the works where I'm doing some other Christmas decor using paper and wood as well. And now my craft shows are over and so I don't have to worry about craft show prep anymore. I'm just trying to finish up all my custom orders so that they can get out by Christmas. So hopefully I can dive into cards. I still have the pink paisley pad that I need to finish off with some Christmas cards and then have a few more projects with this pad and then we'll dive into cards on that as well. So thanks for your time today, guys. If you use this idea, Please, I'd love to see a photo of it. You can tag us, tag me on Instagram at Bourbon Creek Crafts, or you can send me an email with your picture at bourboncreekcrafts at gmail.com because I'd love to see how you use this idea and how you put your own spin on it. And be sure to stay tuned because like I said, there are more ideas coming on how to use up all of that paper in your stash. Thanks guys. I hope you have a great rest of your week.